Well, hello, ladies. It's been a while since we've done a video teaching. And uh, so I wanted to take this opportunity to go over some of the questions that you guys have on the on the page. Um, I am looking at the question stream uh, from March 19th, where I asked you guys to give me some ideas for content. And I have looked through the questions and I've classified them into two groups. One group was asking about how to brand and market yourself or how to market yourself to get customers or to get funding. And the secondary group was asking about how to do their 501c3. So I believe it was Kimberly. Um, he helped marketing myself and securing clients. Uh, I think it was Michelle, same thing. How to market myself and sponsors. I believe it was Tammy as well was asking how to get my name out there as a speaker. Sharla, same thing, marketing myself. <clears throat> I believe it's Tanetta as well at the bottom down here, marketing myself and Tammy. So I want to address that first. Now, it's really the same, same thing you guys are all asking. How to get yourself in front of your target client. So the person who's going to hire you to either do, in your case, Kimberly, for you to do their editing or their copywriting or to become a virtual assistant. Uh, in the case of Michelle, you know, to get whatever it is that you're doing, how are you going to get in front of your ideal client? Well, I'm going to show you a couple ways. In the old days, let me show you what we used to do. And when I say old days, I'm talking about five years ago. Let, let us change then. But in in marketing yourself, you have to present yourself in a very admirable and favorable light to your potential client. So back in the old day, we used to do this thing right here. We used to do what we call a one sheet. This was my one sheet back in the day. Uh, Sharon Gill is available to speak on topics including such and such, women's issue, how to, how to be a winner, how to find God's purpose, all these different things, where I've spoken before, a little picture of myself, a quick biography, and my address, my contact information. And we would literally have this printed in color. And we would mail. Who would I mail to? Well, you look to, in my case, I've spoken before to Rotary Clubs and churches and uh, parachurch ministries. So I would get a list of these people, of these businesses, these potential clients, and I would mail this one sheet to them. I would present myself to them. Um, and so you have to actually go after your client. You have to know who your clients are, who who is your potential client, and you have to actually pursue them. So back in the old days, back, back four, five, six years ago, we would do it with a professional-looking one sheet, a professional biography. In, in the case of you know speaking or any type of business, you would present yourself to your potential client. Now, in today's market, it's different. Everything is online. So the way how you're reaching your marketplace nowadays is through social media, is through advertising on social media. This is the reason why Facebook has exploded. It's a multi-gazillion dollar business because of Facebook ads. So nowadays, to reach my target audience, which is a lot larger, in the old days, I would be able to get to maybe 100 people. I'll get a list. You could either purchase a list or I would research my list and I would mail to 100 clients. 100 potential clients with the hope that maybe five would get back to me. Now, with Facebook, for example, or Google AdWords, I would create an ad. So nowadays, this is what we do. So there are different software that you can purchase and, and, and do. And, you know, maybe if you're not graphically inclined, you could, you could, you know, you could outsource this. But, for example, my mastermind group that I'm promoting, where I'm looking for 25 women to come into a mastermind coaching program with me. So what I do, I created an ad that looks like this. Join it, you know, here's my copy. And Kimberly, you would, you know, you write copies. So you would know I write my copy, what you're going to get, how to register. I give away some stuff because with social media, you're going to give away a lot of stuff. I give away a couple of stuff. I do a biography of myself. It's just the same way. I have some client testimonials. And I, you know, I have boxes that you can register for my course, register for my class, register for my mastermind group. And then you post it on your social media um, platforms, whether it's uh, 
Facebook or Twitter also has ads, Instagram, and you have to actually now pay for advertising. And with Facebook, you can actually target your potential clients. So in my case, I'm looking for women between 30 to let's say 60 that I think may, may um, want to become part of my mastermind. You do all this type of targeting in Facebook and there's ways to do this. That's a whole other class. But I get my message in front of my target audience with the hope that somebody will see my ad and hire me. And that is exactly how we're marketing ourselves now. And, and like I said, that's a whole, cause that's kind of what I teach in the mastermind group, how to go ahead and, you know, prepare, you know, prepare these um, one sheets, prepare these copies and get them out. But you have to go after your target market. You have to know who is your potential client and you have to go after them. They're not going to find you. And this is the reason why I stress social media branding so much, because I get a lot of requests to join this group. I go on the people, you know, on the, on the, on the requesters personal page and I look to see, okay, wh what are they into? Are they going to add value to the group? Because part of what I want to see in this group eventually is people helping people. For example, I saw where Sabrina had posted about a 501c3 and Michelle says, I know someone who has that. And I saw where Kimberly posted something the other day and someone says, Hey, do you do editing? That's what I want to see in the group. I want to see us as a community helping each other. So I want to carefully choose who gets admission to this group. And so it is the reason why I, I stress so much about your brand on social media, because potential clients are looking at you on social media. In your case, Kimberly, if you happen to get hired by someone in this group, it's because you presented yourself in a professional way. We're always presenting. So this is really how you get clients. You have to go after your clients and you're going after clients nowadays with ad targeting, targeted advertising. It, it, it's, it's, I think it was someone who asked about motivational speaker. It, it doesn't matter who you're going after. Your market is on these social media sites. And the way how you do target marketing, you target the people who have an interest in what you do. So that's, a, that's, that's in a microcosm. You know, it's, it's a lot larger than that, but I just want you to start thinking this way. With regards to the folks who are asking about their 501c3, Sabrina, Sabrina pretty much is ready. It could be a funding issue. A 501c3 is not hard. Once you know what your mission is, your vision, and what you're planning to do with the 501c3, all you need is funds. If your 501c3 is going to be um, under 100,000, I think it is, in monies collected for the year, then you need to have $400 filing fees for the IRS. And then the fee that you're going to be charged by the person preparing it will vary from I don't know, two to two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. My husband prepares five hundred one c three, so if anybody have an interest, you can inbox me. But really, you need to have a mission, you need to have a vision, you need to have a board of directors, and it's good if you have a brochure and if you already started doing something in the community, even if it's small. The IRS wants to see that you are legitimate, so. It's, it's just a matter of financial. It's not hard. If you have the finances, you can hire it out. Like I said, if you, you know, you can inbox me or I saw someone here mention that they know someone who's actually, um, you know, doing 501c3s. So it's just a matter of if you have those things in place, you're ready to go. There's nothing to wait for. Once you have your 501c3, for those of you who are doing a nonprofit route, funding comes next. But funders want to, want to see that you have your 501c3. And they want to see that you are establishing yourself as a credible online person. I know for me, I was filling out some insurance documents today for uh, my law firm. And they want to know what is your website because everyone is checking your public presence. Very important that you have that right image out there, even on your personal page. In this group, even if you have a business page, when you post in this group, it is your personal avatar that shows. Anyone in this group can click. And if you're looking to do business with each other, which you can get, you could get clients in this group. You never know. But if the client, if the potential client clicks on your personal page and they see a bunch of stuff that doesn't agree with their values, they most likely won't hire you. So you're always on display. It's just a matter of how you're going to market yourself. Are you going to 
invest in the advertising, that which is the way most people are doing it now. The old way still works, but it's, it's not as effective. No one wants to read the mail anymore. This used to be beautiful back in the day, but no one wants to see this show up in the mail anymore. So that's pretty much, you know, my take on, you know, how you're going to get yourself out there. You have to go where your customers are at. Okay. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.